Hello everyone. Today I'm working on this. This is a driver with a traction tire for a Backman uh, 282. So a subscriber very nicely sent me this part to upgrade uh, my 282. Now I did a video on this engine before. Let me just show it to you. So this engine, I put uh, Shapeways gears in it, and uh, it ran okay, but it couldn't pull many cars. So um, let's just review that for a second. Let's just see how many cars it's going to pull today. I'm using the Batman freight cars from that era, which are uh, very low rolling resistance. And uh, three is pretty much the max it can pull. It's not slipping a lot, but it's slipping a little bit. Now it starts on the grade and uh, it's stuck. But it's gonna make it. So it only has uh, one traction tire here. So I'm going to see if I can put another traction tire right here. That would be sweet. It looks like I can do it without disassembling completely the engine. I just have to uh, remove that screw. I think I can just barely get in there and do it. But of course, uh, putting it back together, that's going to be the tough part. So anyways, I've got this one partly disassembled and these, you can just pop them out like this. I think I've got just enough room to do it. Of course, uh, taking it apart is easy. It's putting it back together. That's going to be a challenge. Yeah, I can just barely squeeze it in here. Now these have a little bit of timing to them, so uh, I have to be careful when I put the other one back. Yeah, I can't uh, get it to go past here, so what I'll do, I have to take it apart now. So that, as they say, is that. So this, um, my ten the link to the tender, the link to the drawbar, it was broken on this engine, so I made one up with a piece of uh, bailing wire. So that's that. This engine was good looking, cosme cosmetically, when you think about it. And then I have to remove the shell. There's just one little screw right here for the shell. So let's get that. Another little screw I have to worry about not losing. That can stay with the shell. And then if I remove this guy should be able to get the boiler off. Let's just see what happens. So I've got that. This is a pretty big screw, so I'm not too worried about losing that. Put those two together. Maybe I can wiggle this a bit. No, not yet. There's another screw in the boiler. And that might even release my motor some. There, the screw in the boiler, I'll just leave it in there for now. That will be fine. And then can I wiggle 
the, the cross head with the cylinders. I would like to do that for sure. Yes, at this point I can wiggle the, the cross head. I don't have to go very far. Just have to wiggle it out. And that will allow me to uh, remove my axle. Just, I just need to move it just a little bit. So it goes downwards, that one. Let's see if I can just get this over the spring. Nice detail, you know, you got the little uh, little springs. A real steam engine, you can see through all of this, but on this one, you can only see the two front drivers. And you can see those springs next to the wheel, so that's good detail, mostly. What a mess. I had to remove mostly all of the valve gear to get it to this point. Anyways, I don't have to fight with that anymore. I can take my driver out and then install my, uh, my traction tire driver. Taking it apart, that's easy. It's putting it back together, that's going to take long. As most things in life go. So I'm going to just put this back. Now as I put it back, I'm being very careful to time it perfectly. Especially compared to the number three, which is your main driver. That's very important that these match. I got everything to match perfectly, so now I'm going to put it back together. I'm using the side rod as a tool that will hold my screw in place. And then I can come in and screw it in. I can't do it on camera because I have to watch what I'm doing. See, I told you this was easy. If I lose that little screw um, on the floor there, I'm pretty much buggered because uh, it's just that small. It's like a grain of dust. So uh, definitely <laughs> you want to sweep your floor before you get into this. I don't know, depends on how you feel. You know, there's days where you don't feel like uh, getting in here and doing that. Other days you can, uh, you can do it, it's okay. So I guess today I'm in good shape. Yeah, look at all these side rods. What a mess. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the, uh, the engine, hold it like that. Use gravity as your friend. And then everything will fall right in place. And then where's my little screwdriver? So the first one to go is to place is your, uh, your main rod. So that should go right like so. And then comes your cylinder rod, which looks like that. That goes in place there. And then you can bring in your excenter rod. And that, you will need that to go like so. And that will solidify everything right where it's supposed to go. I suppose if I use tweezers, it would be a little bit easier. But this is the way I'm used to work, so that will have to do for today. Let's actually do that. I use the excenter crank as a tool to place my uh, my rods. It wants to go in there, it just doesn't know it yet. 
like Adam Sandler says, this is your home. Why don't you just go to your home? Don't you know where your home is? Almost. It just needs to get lined up properly. Oh, I think I got it in. No, not quite. But it's close. See now, I told you this was easy. So the timing of this, put it uh, perpendicular to the weight. And then uh, bring it back just a tenth of a degree and that's it just bring it back just a tiny bit so that will look right perfect so i did the exact same thing on the other side i'm going to be putting the boiler back on when you put it back on make sure there's a little bit of tension on these wires so that they need to rest um, they need to rest on these two pins so make sure that they contact these two pins for your light uh, to work so everything looks good here i just have to make sure to drive these properly in there and then there's a little screw so make sure to have that lined up properly. So everything's looking good. So I'm just going to screw that in. Next is the little pilot. And it has a big screw. that also holds uh, the boiler down. I wanna make sure to see what I'm doing and to line up everything properly. Now that looks pretty good. And then just test everything before I put the shell back on. Wonderful. And I left my little screw uh, in the shell. That makes it easy. So there's just, uh, just one place where this can go. Say I didn't have it lined up properly. Let's try that. Still off just a little bit. Yeah, and then that's good. And then I can bring in the, my tender with the trailing truck. They're not supposed to be set up like that. It was a quick fix that I did just so I could get going again. So this, uh, obviously, this engine has seen better days, but uh, it's still going, so that's good. So we're about to find out how many uh, how many freight cars I can pull with it now. There. Hey, good news! I sold another uh, locomotive from my website, and uh, 
that made me feel good actually if you want to help me out make more videos come and check out my website it's uh, watchtrainsnow.com I will put a link in the description below let's put some power on this let's see what we got just testing it, testing it on the bench is one thing but the track track is the real test these the power pickup is not amazing on these so they may stall out but so far so good actually perfect so let's see how many cars it can pull wow i'm up to 10 freight cars that is a significant improvement although it is uh, slipping a bit now but uh, that is a significant improvement if i could run uh, six freight cars like this i would call it good and i would be happy with that that is very satisfying. All right, I've got another one just like it to fix. I've got another set of shape waist gears so uh, I'm gonna uh, I bought another one so I could fix it so this one has the box so uh, I thought that it would be in better shape but really no it isn't these have been around a while so if you buy one of these you're definitely uh, taking a chance it's very nice to get the, uh, the box and this one still has instructions as far as I can tell let's take a look at that it's like my old magazines this is uh, going back in time Mikado 282 when vendor built tender destructions parts list I've been on the Backman website uh, looking for parts lately. And the, uh, this is 30 years old they don't offer parts for this so it's kind of nice to have the, uh, the instructions at any rate in case you forget how they go back together and then this looks like an ad. Oh yeah, 36 pages of full color catalog. And they got the class J on, uh, on the cover. That is a nice engine. These were like the last, last engines steam engines to be built, the GS4 and the Class J, and uh, this standard looks to be in good shape, all the little steps are there, handrails, this is a nice looking engine to be sure, and like I said, very nice to get the box. Let's take a look at that, see the... Um, I, I opened it before to check it out. The center crank, the little rivet got loose there. So I don't really have a plan for that. You can see all the wheels are out of uh, alignment. They're out of timing, so that's gonna be bad. These two, completely out of timing. Everything else looks mint. Oh, it's missing the uh, Elasco feed water heater. But it's got the two, uh, the two handrails there. And these top handrails, they look straight. It looks straight enough. I'm gonna see if I can straighten it better. That is pretty much how they go, those handrails. There's a little pop valve here. It's uh, 
actually these are the pop valve this would be the whistle but it looks appears to be brass it's very solid anyways so lots of good details on these you can see the air tanks for the brace the two air pumps lots of nice detail this is your power reverse here and lots of pipings and coolers it's a nice looking engine well let's see if we can get it going again I'm just gonna put some power to it if I remember correctly it doesn't work at all oh it can't work because everything's out of timing so I'm gonna take it apart I'm gonna take all the valve gear out and then we'll try just the motor by itself since I probably need to replace the gears anyhow. So we'll start by the shell removal, like I always do. If I had the correct screwdriver, it would help. So that's just one screw uh, on the, the smokestack. Well, hang on, maybe there's more. This one's in better shape than the first one. Yeah, there's two snaps in the back which the other one was missing. I don't want to pull too hard and break it, but there's two snaps in the back. So that looks pretty good so far. I'm going to remove uh, all this valve gear here. So, just like before, it's one uh, while your excenter crank goes here that is just pressed in. I'm taking my time so I don't destroy everything. But the center crank is broken. Maybe I can fix it. We'll see. But that is just a tiny, tiny little pin. So I want to make sure I don't lose that. So that's a good part of it. And the other part of it is this little screw here. Same as the other one. Hey, and this one has the two... Uh, the two traction tires right off the bat so that is good news actually oh did you see that fly off that is gonna happen now i have to track down that screw found it so i'm gonna put these together so i don't lose them everything else is pretty much attached you kind of need kind of need the, the um You kind of need this screw. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you kind of need it. And then we'll do the same thing for that side. We'll just remove the excenter crank and the little screw. Wow, that was easy. I'm going to see if the um, motor will move a little bit on that. It sort of kind of wants to go, but not uh, not really, no. Wow, well, I'm glad the motor is not busted. So I'll move it by hand so I can remove the screw. So I don't want to wreck the motor, so I just move it by hand like that. Till I can move the, uh, the wheel to its correct position. Nowadays, they'll have a couple of wheels geared and a couple of wheels uh, moved by the rods. And that is, it's a better design. There's less chance of everything binding up like what happened to this engine. Would you guys be interested in buying the first one? The first uh, 282? If so, uh, put it in the comments below. And if you are interested, um, then I'll put it up on my website. This is going to take a while, so um, I'll just speed it up here. You couldn't see it because of the way it was positioned, but there's a huge accumulation of lint on this pin here. So that I'm going to try and remove it so you can see it. But yeah, there's a lot of it. Just 
Make sure my camera is focused properly. Yeah, there's enough of it to hold the, the screw there. So that can't help. So I'm going to be removing this lint now. I actually had to unscrew this, so that couldn't have helped uh, the engine to run too much. I'm going to keep collecting these. I'm going to make a sweater out of these. If everything's disconnected, it still sort of kind of wants to run, but uh, something's blocking it. So uh, the motor is still working, it's just under a lot of, uh, something's blocking the gears. So let's get down to it. I'm going to remove uh, these two screws. I'm going to remove the, the boiler, the big counterweight for the boiler. We're going to remove that. I did not check if the light was working, but it wants to pop out. This uh, big screw retains the boiler and the light. So because that's big, it's not easy. You don't have to worry about losing it. It's easy not to lose it because it's so big. And this holds, this only holds the back truck, I think, has no other purpose. So that's not major major there's one more screw here for the boiler and that will release the motor this is what I was missing from the other uh, engine I was missing this part of the frame here somebody cut that off so I couldn't hook up the tender and I it didn't hold the motor in place and then this was missing and also this plastic cover here was missing from the other engine so this one, I'm still not 100% sure I can get it going because it's had a rough life. But, oh, let me just test the light. That's the only thing I haven't tested yet. It's the light. Let's see what we got. Wow, that is very bright. So let's just set this aside for now. And I think I can take the motor off in my hands now. Yeah, that was easy. And then I can check for the gearing. What's going on with the gearing? For some reason right now, oh, there's something that binds. Now this, I wouldn't be surprised that it would have cracked gears. So these are notorious for cracked gears. Sometimes it'll pass, but other times it'll block. See, now it's blocking. So let's just test the motor by itself. That's what I always do. So the motor uh, sort of kind of works, but it doesn't, uh, it's like it doesn't start on its own. So that uh, that's not good. Maybe it shot this motor. I'm going to run it like that, uh, light, for a little bit. Maybe it'll snap back into place. It's certainly been under a lot of load. So I'm going to run it like that on the bench for a little bit. And I'm going to re-lubricate it. That never hurts. Let me bring my Label 108 close by. So all I do is I remove all the hair that I can find. I'll put a little drop on this side. And then I'll wiggle it. There's a little bit of a wiggle room to get the oil in there, work it in. Same with, I'll run it like that so gravity can, um, gravity can bring back the, uh, the oil inside. We don't want to get oil on the commutator. That would be bad. So I run it as, uh, as low as it will, the lowest speed I can do. Yeah, this is it. On this power pack, that's the lowest speed it'll go. 
So I'll run it on the bench like that for a little bit. I'm gonna try and save this more. What I do is I cut tiny little slips of cardboard and I'll stick that in the commutator and try to clean it up as best as I can. So just any cardboard box. So I stick that in there, it will um, it will wipe some of that grease off. There's been grease in the commutator from before, so I'm trying to clean that up. That takes a little bit of time. So you see that little bit of black there? That is grease from the commutator, so I'll cut that up and use the next little bit from it. This is going to be real tough to show, but you know what else you can do? There's a little a space between the phases of the commutator it it appears like a black line and that you can clean clean the middle of that often that helps well i'm afraid the news is not good um, because the gears bind the previous owner probably what he did is he just cranked up the power to right up to 11 and uh, probably burn one of, one of the phases. So there's power on now, but it just uh, won't start on its own. If I help it, then it will run. But when that happens, one of the armature uh, phases is shorted. The, uh, the motor just won't start on its own and it's very weak and it gets hot uh, very soon. So I'm going to put it back together, but I don't know if it's going to run. It's 50-50. Uh, That's the thing about eBay, uh, buyer beware. So for me, this engine, I'll, I'll try my best to get it going, but probably it's just going to be a parts engine. And then, you know, if after a couple of years I end up not doing anything with it, it goes, I put them all, these engines, these dead engines, I put them all in a big lot. And I put them up for sale on eBay, uh, 99 cents auction, and then whoever's the most interested in that wins it. But that is not a very good engine, I think. I am going to swap out the gears since I've got a set of extra gears. So how to do that, you just lift, um, you just lift the cylinders out, just go up and over. go up and over like this and then you can uh, wiggle them around the the pilot beam yeah that pilot beam is pretty big pretty tough to wiggle them around that and then we have access to our gears this engine how it works is there's two uh, metal plates one on each side I really only need to get to the side that has gears and how you do that is you just pry under the wheels very gently and it'll just pop out like that remember the number three driver is your main driver the counterweight is bigger and then We'll redo the timing. The timing's completely off. So we'll redo the timing after when I put everything back together. Actually, come to think of it, because I'm removing the gears, I have to remove this other set of wheels. So I'm going to swap out the gears for a good gear. So this side, I don't really need to remove that metal plate, but I do like the springs uh, detail. That is really cool. So what's holding uh, this together is just uh, one screw here and one screw here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. A 
putting everything in order of what I remove. And this is a little contact strip. Helps the engine out. These don't have super good uh, electrical pickup. But I still want to uh, be mindful of that. And here's all my bad gears. We'll play with that in a second. This uh, little metal thing just is just there to contact the motor. There. So that's that. Feels very well lubricated. I'm not cleaning this. This is the factory lubrication that works just right. So let's see which one of these gears uh, is bad. I have to put this little guy back. This will help me check my gears. Oh, they definitely don't want to stay in there. That pretty much tells you that. 100% you can see all the gears are cracked. There's a little bit of hair here, but that's not going to keep the uh, it's not going to keep the engine from running. Definitely not. And then, same here, there's a bunch of hair. But still, that's not enough to keep it from running. What keeps it from running is these big cracks. There's a big crack here. Basically, every gear is cracked. Yeah, it's got plenty of lubrication. For sure, for sure. So they all have little cracks. Yeah, see it binds there. This one's probably the worst. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change these out. This is my Shapeways gear. You can see the big one here, the four axles and the two little idlers. I'm gonna go ahead and snip this. Actually, I'll snip it, snip it like that. It makes it a lot easier to get them out. So we're going to pretend we didn't see that the motor is bad. And we're going to put these new gears in. And then the old gears, I'll keep them in a baggie. And then this gear, it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can reuse it because the Shapeways one is a, on the other engine it was a little tight and this one here too it's a little tight on there so if I have, I have a chance to reuse this I will I'm gonna install my Shapeways gear I'm gonna have to try really hard not to put them on the floor So, so far so good. I check them like that. And then I'll put these big ones and then the two little idlers. Yeah, end scale is kind of an extreme sport like that. It's pretty hard to, uh, to get all these little parts. And then let's see what we got here definitely feels better since I have everything open up like that I am gonna lubricate it now lubricate it now although it had plenty of lubrication before I'm still not taking uh, any chances there since I have it up I have it up and running up and in my hands I'll just re-lubricate it I'm going to put the cover back because that's going to hold my gears together. So I can spin them around and see how it feels. So actually it does feel a lot better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reinstall the wheels and I 
will uh, see if I can get the motor going. So the timing of the wheels, very important. Let's start with the main driver. This wheel has the traction tire, so it goes to the front. And you can see the main driver has just a little bit bigger uh, counterweight. So with the bigger counterweight, because it has the eccenter crank on. There we go. So that goes to number three. And we'll put the other side, we'll put a, a quarter turn difference. So they just slide in there. I'm gonna make this very precise since uh, if you're gonna do something, you may as well do it right. See now they're exactly a quarter third apart. So now I just have to time the other ones exactly like that. And that will be awesome. Well, I got the motor to turn. Uh, that reminds me of an episode from one of my favorite uh, YouTubers, uh, Mortsky Repair, where he had a 76 Monaco and uh, he worked so hard to get it going. At first, uh, he did get the motor to turn, but it was working evidently uh, six out of eight cylinders. So he kept at it, kept at it, and um, eventually just gave up because the valve, something was stuck in the valves. So uh, he should have quit, you know, when he just, just got it going. So that's probably what I'm gonna do with this thing. I'm gonna show you that it does run. So it runs, but it gets hot very quick, quickly. So it's never gonna run, uh, it's never gonna run right. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the, uh, the counterweight back on and we'll go try it on the track. So these two whiskers here that powers your light so just make sure that they are just uh, touching the proper spot, so you can get uh, you can get the light to work. So it's not gonna work on the track, but since I have it working here, I'm gonna call that a win. Now, since my uh, Backman engine doesn't want to cooperate. I'm gonna run uh, this nice Kado one, which uh, I know I can count on. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.